Welcome to the Facebook live session from Narayana Health on the occasion of World Cancer Day. And I am Dr. Shruti Devi from the Gynec Onco Department in Narayana Health. And today with us, we have the experts in medical oncology, Dr. Nidhi Tandon, Madam, and Dr. Koshal Gupta, sir. So, so what is cancer? Yeah, so cancer is an abnormal proliferation of the cells, uh, which is uncontrolled by our body's uh, own mechanisms to uh, regulate it. So there, there are uh, uh, different, almost 200 different types of cancers, starting from solid tumors to blood cancers. So cancer, uh, when the uh, these abnormal cells they uh, start proliferating uncontrollably without the body's checks, uh, then it leads to a tumor formation, and that is called as cancer. Yeah. So, uh, what causes cancer, madam? What are the so a large uh, proportion of cancers are uh, without a known etiology but uh, the factors which predispose us to a higher risk of cancer development include smoking uh, smoking could be in form of a cigarette or tobacco or gutka khene um, alcoholism uh, obesity uh, improper dietary habits uh, where a large volume of red meat is consumed uh, as compared to fat, uh, air pollution or exposure to chemicals and radiations. These are the factors which predispose us to a higher risk of development of cancer. So, uh, so since cancer is a big issue in a country in the whole world, so what are the warning signs which should bring the patient to a doctor? So usually the problem with cancer is that the uh, symptoms are very non-specific and that is why a lot of patients have a delay in diagnosis and when they reach to us they are already in an advanced condition. Um, a loss of appetite or uh, weight which is persistent over months, uh, specifically if you have lost more than 10% of your body weight uh, without trying to achieve that. Uh, mole or a scar which is looking abnormal uh, bleeding from any site uh, whether it is through your mouth or uh, per vaginum or uh, uh, in urine or stool cuff or breathlessness or uh, improper uh, bowel habits where there is sometimes there is constipation sometimes there is loose motion so these are the symptoms which can happen because of a variety of infections also but if they are persistent for weeks uh, without responding to the general treatment then you should visit an oncologist uh, so, sir. so when the patient is not having any symptoms are there any tests which, will, which are available to diagnose cancer or if the patient can uh, come before there is cancer? Yeah, so uh, for, uh, uh, I think uh, Dr. Shruti, you are asking about uh, how we can screening. come earlier to yeah. the doctor before the diagnosis it's of cancer. Yeah. So that is a very good question actually. So uh, what we always advise uh, our patients and their relatives also is to be aware of their body, what is going on in their body. Like as ma'am said that, you know, any new symptom, any should bring the uh, patient to the doctor uh, they should be aware of their body's uh, normal habits and you know if they are passing stools in the uh, in the if they are passing stools mixed with blood then they should obviously come to these are these things happen when the patient has got symptoms now your question is related to patients who don't have symptoms yeah. when do should come the, uh, come mm -hmm. to the doctor I would suggest that uh, if uh, if someone has got a strong family history of cancers then that is one of the sign uh, the indications for you know, going for a screening. For example, we come across many such cases where uh, patients or their family members have developed have a strong history of breast cancer, you know, and uh, early breast cancers, or someone in the uh, family has got a, some um, uh, male patient in the family has got a breast cancer, then these are always, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> the relative should always come to the, uh, and to the doctor and they should ask for if they want some genetic screening. Likewise, for women also, there is a, a cervical cancer screening program, which is a very simple test. That is, we call the Pap smear test. That you know, we can um, advise after a certain age, maybe after 50 to 55 years of age, we advise a yearly Pap smear test, or after two every two years. Self breast examination for the patients is very important. So all the women should learn self breast examination, especially after the age of 40 years. 
so that they can detect anything you know this is a very simple test it's very it's nothing uh, there is no rocket science about it all the women uh, who are you know who can they, they they can themselves check their breasts for any lump or any uh, that is clinical screening if they find anything uh, they should always report to the doctor apart from that there are uh, other screening tests which are not yet validated for example uh, lung cancer screening is not yet validated in our country uh, there are also a lot of gray areas in screening like in the prostate cancer screening uh, this thing um, it's not actually there are no proper guidelines to screen but yes if the patient has got any symptoms or there is a strong history of prostate cancer in the family then i think they should always seek an opinion of an oncologist a qualified oncologist to see if they are eligible for any of the screening tests so is cancer curable is there any other options so it largely depends on what stage the cancer is uh, diagnosed and by stage we mean how much has the cancer spread to other body parts when it is diagnosed in early stages uh, most of the cancers are curable uh, it depends on what type of cancer you have for example a breast cancer in an early stage may be curable in 90% of the women whereas an ovarian cancer in an early stage may be curable in 60% of the women but in early stages most of the cancers are curable when the dis- uh, cancer becomes advanced in the form that it has spread from the organ of a region to other organs then is when it becomes incurable but still the disease can be kept under control for many years to together okay so dr gupta so yeah. what are the treatment options available for cancer so conventionally cancer has been treated by three modalities which is surgery radiotherapy and chemotherapy which is giving can- cancer uh, anti cancer medicines in most of the hospitals nowadays we have a multidisciplinary team where all the three specialties sit together and plan the appropriate uh, uh, line of treatment for which is suiting the uh, suitable for each of the patient so there is uh, there are other modalities also which are coming into uh, picture nowadays like targeted therapies and immunotherapies which are related to uh, they are more specific have a lesser uh, toxicity profile as compared to the conventional immun- uh, chemotherapies but overall cancer is a treatment of cancer is a, a mix and match of all the modalities and it is tailor made for each patient okay. so uh, dr tandan so what is what are the side effects of chemotherapy so um, chemotherapy will act on any cell which is actively dividing and since cancer cells are the cells which are most actively dividing therefore uh, chemotherapy works best to kill those cancer cells but it can affect the other body cells which are actively dividing for example over here are actively dividing and that is why the patients develop baldness when the patient is on chemotherapy uh, having said that all this is temporary and when their chemotherapy will be over they will gain the hair back apart from that uh, some amount of weakness uh, uh, vomiting uh, constipation or loose motion can happen but now there are enough medications available to take care of these problems and our patients are able to go to work while the patients are on chemotherapy most importantly with chemotherapy blood counts will fall and when blood counts fall the patient is predisposed to infections so that is the thing that the patients need to take care that uh, they should maintain hygiene and uh, prevent from getting any infections okay. so uh, is there any role of genetic screening in uh, cancer so uh, as dr kushal mentioned in the beginning there are certain cancers which have a hereditary predisposition uh, breast and ovary are one of the cancers which have a strong uh, linkage uh, so if there are uh, you have a strong family history in form of uh, three or more members who have uh, breast or ovarian cancer or uh, any lady who has breast cancer in both the breast or any lady who has breast cancer 
as well as ovarian cancer or any male member in the family who has breast cancer so these are the findings which uh, suggest that the cancer may be hereditary mm -hmm. apart from that also young women less than 45 years of age uh, women uh, who have a typical type of uh, triple negative breast cancer or a typical type of ovarian cancer like high grade serous ovarian cancer these are the patients in which we suspect the cancer to be genetic and there is a simple blood test which can be done to determine whether their cancer is hereditary or not okay. so uh, dr agupta so what do you want to tell about the psychological aspect of cancer treatment in yeah uh, so dr shruti this is a very uh, important and touching question so uh, once a cancer uh, diagnosis is made uh, usually the family it comes as a bolt from the blue for the family and they usually uh, they are uh, the word cancer scares them a lot but i would like to assure them that uh, if you go to the doctor prob at the proper time and you know uh, you have a special team of good specialists who are well trained in treating cancers then there is nothing to be worried about so it is yes it is important uh, that you know you keep up your psych psychological morale high and as well as that of the patient should be high uh, having said that uh, the initial ups and downs the psychological um, um, trauma of undergoing chemotherapy that all can be taken care of we do have cancer specific counselors also who can deal with each uh, each of your problems the most important thing for all the patients and their relatives is to Uh, talk to their doctor and it's our duty as doctors to give uh, psychological morale boosting uh, you know a, lo a lot of uh, uh, encouragement to the patients because cancer is is not a, a new thing it's been there since ages millions of people millions of patients have fought it and fought it well and conquered it now they are leading a normal life so there is absolutely nothing to be scared of cancers only thing only thing uh, what we as doctors as a team we would request you is that lead a healthy lifestyle avoid any sort of addictions visit your doctors regularly avoid stress and have good food and good sleep what are the newer modalities of treatment in chemotherapy so uh Uh, one of them is something called as targeted therapy so now we have the expertise that we can uh, detect uh, the presence of certain receptors on the cancer cells and we have certain medications available which directly goes and attaches to these receptors uh, and therefore the cell killing is much more effective uh, also since this receptors uh, is not present in any other normal body cell therefore it does not have the side effects of chemotherapy so in depending on the type of cancer there uh, there are different targeted therapies available and they greatly enhance the effectiveness of chemotherapy okay thank you so uh, what is immunotherapy in, in cancer treatment and yeah, that's a very good question dr shruti uh, so immunotherapy as we come to know from the word immuno as well as therapy so it's related something to our immune system as i already talked earlier uh, cancer happens when our cancer cells uh, escape our body's defense mechanism or the regulatory mechanisms so what immunotherapy does in simple terms is that it helps unmask all those uh, tumor cells and making this them susceptible to our immune immune cells to fight them so so that our immune cells who which act as the policemen of the body they can once again target all those cancerous cells and kill them or you know by the various mechan there are various mechanisms so that is how immunotherapy works so immunotherapy put in one sentence is that which enhances our body's own defense mechanisms to act once again and target again the cancer cells to kill them so lastly i would just like to say that uh, uh, for any uh, patient with cancer it is very important that you get a holistic approach uh, not only from uh, a surgeon or a medical oncologist who deals with chemotherapy uh, or a radiation oncologist who deals with radiation therapy uh, like in our hospital we have a multidisciplinary tumor board so every single patient is discussed uh, among all of us uh, surgeon medical radiation oncologist as well as a pathologist and radiologist and a complete 
plan of treatment uh, is uh, made in the tumor board and followed for the patients. So, sir, can you give the take home message for the viewers? Yeah, so uh, I would like to tell all my viewers that, you know, all our viewers is that uh, no need to be uh, afraid of, of the word cancer. Uh, if anything, if you have any doubt or if any uh, person in the family has got such a diagnosis, there is no need at all to be afraid. We are all there to help you and support you and uh, be with you in this fight against cancer. So, uh, hope the session was useful. Wish you all a very healthy life. Thank you.